The last, no, during the last week, well, we had a shir about Shleish Logan. During the last week, we learned some of the Seifim, which are talking about Shleish Logan. Some of you are already holding by snow, some of you are already holding by Shinimara, and some of you are holding by, still by Shleish Logan. I'm going to focus now on the Seifim, which are relevant specifically to Shleish Logan. Um, yeah, it should be on there. Yeah. The in the if tesvav. Yeah, that's the begin, the main beginning of Shlisha Logan. Says a mikveh which does not have forty saw means not a mikveh kasher. If Four, if three lugim fall into the Vayim Sheovim, they make it possible. Means all the water in the mikveh right now is possible. You can't tie in it. And the Shach right away explains there's no difference if the Shleish Lugim come in the beginning, if the Shleish Lugim come in the end, and uh, which we discussed in the previous year. It just was going to point out what happens if you have Shlesha Lugin and then you have 40 sa'a of kosher water that fall into it? So there's a Sheiltis, which is brought in the Besiasif. Huh? No, Shlesha Lugin and Mam fell into a boir without without Hamshacha. There's a Sheiltis, which is brought in the Besiasif in Baisif Lamed, where he, Sif Lamed, Lamed Aleph. Where he says that if you have these gimel lugin in the beginning, even if you have a full forty south kosher water afterwards, the mikveh is still possible. Huh? Maybe it's maybe it was mevatalit. Huh? Saying it's huh? Saying the mayan is machshav b'cholshu. It's a different get. I'm saying is that you have, and then everything that's inside is possible, and that's how. That's the halacha. That's how we go until you wash out. We have to wash out the the, the problematic water. It's but the the, the make shamim, right? Make shamim a forty sa'a that came on top of shleisha lugin sheovim makes the whole mikveh puzzle, even though it's forty sa'a. Even if it comes in one shot, a forty sa'a. Huh? If it comes in one shot, there are certain discussions that if it comes in one shot, it will be machshirit, but. Mahalacha, we follow that it does not machshir it. The 40 sa'ah become all pasal, unless it's done in such a way that it pours out, pushes out the pasal of water, which we'll discuss at a different time. If it's shikhu, then it doesn't make it possible. Yeah. Now, there's an interesting question. Mayim that came through something which is mekabal tuma, not through shuvim. That means it ran over a keli, which is not not a keli, over something which is in Kabul Tuma, but it's not a keli. Does that also, do we also say that it's gimelugim? Or do we say that it's like other things that we learned about, that it goes based on adruboy, that if it's 19, 19 uh, of Kabul Tuma versus 21, it's fine. There is a sefer called Mea Shiloyach. I think you have it in the back of your safer, but since last time I thought that you have a safer and nuts, I still made a copies from the old one. But I think you have it in your safer. Mea Shiloyach Simon Heisif Aleph writes the Pashtos Afilu Hakelim Sheein Lohem Beis Kibul Sheinam Poislim Mishum Sheuvim Poish Biyarnu. That means it doesn't have a base Kibul, so it's not really a Kaili. The Kolmokan Hem Mekabelim Tuma Poislim. That's the state, Poislin. The Yeroy Ladaiti, I think, Shehem Poislin Bishloy Shalugin, Kadin Hashauvin Bekeli. That means that also Mikabal Tum is also Poislin in Shloy Shalugin. And in Sif Cotton Bays, the beard on the side, he explains all his rayas. First of all, from the Lashen Poislin, that the Lashen Poislin refers that it makes the whole Mikve Apostle. If it would be just something, uh, Poislin is also used elsewhere. 
that it makes the makes mikve possible. So we as we see that mekabel tuma is using the same lashon as shiurim. So it's obviously the same shir also. And he brings the eyes from the mishnayos, and then he concludes. He says, well, according to the rash, the whole gzeira of shiurim, like gzeira, the whole isur of shiurim, is a is is comes out from the isur of mekabel tuma. Because the main thing is avayosa de tahara. So if you have, so now we see that shuvim is secondary to mekabel tuma. So if by shuvim it's gimelugin, for sure by avayosa al de tuma it's also gimelugin. That's ah. Huh? Shoch is okay. Uh, at the rest without, without Where's how we also the tumor? Ligin over the Mokim, the Mokim, there's a Machlekus over there if it's the animals or the people. And there's a, and there's this question why are they making it possible? Is it possible with Tad Shuvim? Is it possible with Tad? Is it becomes like Shuvim? We're not we're going to discuss in a second. We'll get to it soon. The, there's a Gidule Tahara, this Nachal Sifkot and Lamet Ches. The Gidule Tahara has the inside and then it has two Pirushim, a Nachal and Gava, two sides. So Nachal Sifkot and Lamet Ches, he holds the other way around. He says, but by, by Tume, he doesn't make it possible until Ruba. And he says, Hecho de Kvar Yesh, Roiv Mayim Ksherim, but make it close to the end of Sifkot and Lamet Ches. En Shum Svara She Yifsel Mishum Avayos Haridei Tume. That means if you have 21 kosher, and you have 19 of tumah, it doesn't make it possible. And what does it mean not possible? That means that you can't toivel in it because it's not uh, kosher water, but it's not water that makes it possible. So you will need another 19 sa'ah to complete the 40 sa'ah of rainwater over there. But the lechem v'simla which we mentioned in the past, is from the Kitzvah Shulchan Aruch, the one who wrote the Kitzvah Shulchan Aruch wrote the Lechem of Simla also, in Simla Sifkot and Pei Gimel, he brings, first he brings the Me'a Shiloyach and asks a few questions on him, and the Gidule Tahare, and he's Poyrech, what the Gidule Tahare says, and he concludes in Sifkot and Pei Gimel, Lech and Nira Lafin Yuzdaiti Ha'ikar, the Gam Gimel Lugim Al-Yadom Al-Mekabal Tum and Poyrech and Samikvah. So he passes like the Me'a Shiloyach, that even for Mikabal Tumo, also Gimel Lugin is Pais Samik. Now, there is something from the Tzemach Tzedek, which I could not find now, but it's, I, I seem to recall that Tzemach Tzedek seemed to be Machmer over here. It's not clear. I couldn't find it, so that's why I didn't print it. Um, I did find something from the Rebbe Rashab. It's a long letter from the Rebbe Rashab. I didn't print the whole letter in the booklet. I only printed the relevant paragraphs. It's Simon Samachvov in his Shas Chuvas Teras Shalom. And he discusses the whole concept of Gimel Logim. And over there, page Kuf Chav Ches, Kuf Chav Tes, which you have by you, towards the end of the page of Kuf Chav Ches, has a Dibra Maschel Madana Yomtev. Madana Yomtev was a Pirush on the Rosh. And the Madana Yomtev says that the soul of Gimel Logim, talking about when the when the people, when the league game passes, the animals splash the water, or the people splash the water. Why is it if people splash the water, the water is not kasha? He says, because the person is mekabal tumah. That's what the Madani Yom Tev explains, the, why the Rosh Paskins is machmer. The person is mekabal tumah, and therefore, the water that he caused to move, it's not the it's not shuv, it's mekabal tumah. The water that he caused to move makes the makes the mikveh possible. The Rebbe Rashab right away asks a question. How could you say, first of all, that this is the psal? The Rosh is talking about Shuvim. This whole paragraph in the Rosh that the Madani Yom Tov is referring to is talking about Shuvim, not talking about Kabbalah, talking about Kabbalah Tumah. And the Rosh wants to tell you that when a person causes the water to come to the mikveh, it has the same category of psal as Shuvim. Not because of Kabbalah's Tumah. And one of the proofs he brings is, from something that you learned in Shulchan Aruch, that when you squeeze a piece of clothing into the mikveh, 
Shloisha Lugin makes a mikveh parcel. Right? Now, this piece of clothing has no base kibble. Okay, there are certain opinions that uh, there's different opinions, different achrainim would say that there's a difference between a thick piece of clothing, a thin piece of clothing is absorbed or not absorbed. But simply looking at it, a piece of clothing doesn't have a, you pour water through it, it'll go right uh, right through it. There's no base kibble. So he explains the problem is that by the person, the hands of the person squeezing this, okay, this baguette, it becomes shuvim, and not because of tumah. It's, it's mentioned in the same sefer shuvim. The Rebbe Hashem even uses the expression matoli in havayosi betara b'shir gimelugim. What connections there bechlal between havayosi and tahara to gimelugim? So the Rebbe Hashem comes and explains a different explanation. He says. A keli which is not mekabel tumu, I mean something which is not mekabel tumu, for whatever reason, whether because it has a big hole, or because it's a broken piece of something, or because it's a pshute kalim from not from not from metal, not from wood, which is not which is which is not mekabel tumu. All these we'll call them kalim, which are not mekabel tumu. They not considered a keli. It means they never entered the definition of a keli. Is that all? Yeah. Whichever way this keli is not mekabel tuma, for whatever reason, if api halacha this keli is not mekabel tuma, then it's not. It's always keli. It's not bechal together from a keli. Bemela, any water that goes on top of it is not shuvim. It's not a keli. But a keli which halachically is mekabel tuma. Re- receives a halachic definition of a keli. Ah, you're going to say there's no ikuv mayim. The water doesn't stop over there. There's no... Uh, if halachically this thing is something which is mekabal tumah, it receives the definition of a keli. A flat piece of wood. A flat piece of metal. No. It's mekabal tumah, but it doesn't hold any water. Right. But it's a keli. Every pipe is a keli. Why is every pipe a keli? It's made from plastic, not from metal. If you're going to say, even metal that it's in Mechabal Tumah, Pshut Eklimatchas, is only if it was not made for the purpose of installing an opinion, a cover of opinion. Wait a second. What? What? What do you mean? I don't understand the question. Yeah, the Rebbe Hashem explains that if it's something which is a Kaili, by halachic definition of a Kaili, by it becoming Mechabal Tumah, if it's something which is Mechabal Tumah, so by the mere fact that halachically it's mekabel tuma, it become it it has a definition of a keli which makes the water passing on it possible like shovim. Yeah. Yeah, but the nails, but uh, but it's only uh, if you're talking about the nails, I already explained that the nails are only the nails that are made specifically only for for construction. Smaller nails are not. But, but those nails you don't have to cover those it. Those nails you don't have to cover it. We still do anyways because you don't want anything metal touching it. So therefore he says, Be'etzem, yeah, the Kabbalah's Tuma and Shuvim are not really connected one to another when it comes to to uh, to the Shur of Gimelogim. LMI. You have something which is Mechabal Tuma. By it being a Kabbal Tuma, it receives the definition of a Kaili. By receiving the definition of a Kaili, any water that goes over it is possible. It's not of him. So we see, according to Rabbi Hashab, we could say there's no really Machlekas over here. Because whether you hold that, that, that Gimel, that Mechabal Tuma has a share of Gimel Lugin, or Mechabal Tuma does not have a share of Gimel Lugin, it has a shear of more, it really doesn't make a difference because if it went on a keli, something which has a category of a keli, which is mekabal tuma, or a person that is mekabal tuma, it becomes like she'uvim. So the only di- what what difference is there if we say that it becomes a pasta like she'uvim and not mitzad mekabal tuma? Mekabal tuma from a pasta de raisa. Sometimes, I mean, shuvim. A lot of times, you have a category of shuvim which is only the rabbanon. So when you have a suffix, if you know which category to put the water into, 
you will know if a suffix is the or the kulu. So basically, regardless of which way we look at it, if we take the Rebbe, the way that Rebbe Hashab explains it, you have to make sure that the water that comes into the mikveh has to have nothing after the hamshacha, because the hamshacha takes away the tumah from it, and it's not the same category mamish as shuvim. It's like shuvim. It's not the same category yeah, as shuvim. Tumah, it's tumah supposed to be dry. Now we also say the tahara. The discussion if it's possible to do. I'm saying I'm saying the situation of Hagabim. Hagabim is not a kabel tumah. That's why it's that's why it's ah it's a shaila if it's mitzad tumah if it's mitzad tumah or mitzad the das. It's mitzad tumah. If it's mitzad the behem is not a kabel tumah. Yeah, it's okay anyways. The halacha says it's okay. So therefore, sometimes you'll have a situation. That somebody wants to direct the water into the mikveh. You build the mikveh, and I think I mentioned it over here that when you want, there is a takana from the Rebbe. I think I, I don't know if I mentioned it that the water of the city water should fall on top of the bottom boil when the mikveh is filled up. So if you look you under, ah. And not fall on the floor and and, and, and roll on the floor. It should fall straight into on top of the bartach and becomes zri and that at that moment. So a lot of mikvois you'll see when they have the opening of the bartach under the steps will be a hole under the steps which feeds the city water. How do you make a hole under the steps that turns? You stick two pipes in, and right before it dries, you pull the pipe out. I'll explain to you. When you want to make, you want to have the water that comes into the mikveh come through the wall and fall straight on top of the bottom bar. Right? So wherever the, if the bottom bar is exposed in a place, regular place where you see it, so it's very easy. You have an opening on top of the mikveh and you have where the city water comes in from and you have the bottom boy right next to it, and the water comes off this uh, this hamshacha and falls right on top. What happens practically when you have a mikvah, a lot of mikvahs are built today to make it nicer, the bottom boy, the entrance to the bottom boy is under the steps. First of all, for safety, so nobody gets his foot stuck over there. Second, it's much nicer. You don't have a hole in the middle of the mikvah. So now you have to figure out how you're going to get the city water to come to there. Hole there's where? A hole in the steps. So there is a hole under the steps. You make a hole under the steps that's leading to the to the wall. So you have this is the you have a a a uh, huh? Yeah, I don't have pictures. This is this is the steps you go down to the mikveh on this is a slant, right? So this is the steps going down into the mikveh. Here is the bottom board. Under here there's an opening. Right here is going to be a hole. On the steps. On the steps. In, under the steps. So now, under you don't see a hole when you go down the steps. Right, okay. The hole is only from under. Right. So how do you get this hole over here to get the water? No. So there's a the hole through here, and then it takes a turn through the concrete, and it comes up through the wall of the mikveh to where the amshach is. So, so there's no pipe. Well, you can't put a pipe over there. So what you do is you stick plastic pipes in there and to have the right size. But when the concrete... Huh? Wait. Huh? No, because you make it right under the second step. It's very short. You might even be able to make it straight. Huh? Might not even have to go through the steps. But, yeah. So... so Sometimes you'll stick a pipe into there and you have to remember to pull it out before the concrete dries because otherwise you're not going to be able to get it out. Well, because you can't get it out. It's a Kaylee. So you can put styrofoam, you could do something like that. Some people take a piece of pipe and they'll wrap it in 10 uh, layers of, st of, 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 uh, of, um, of uh, saran wrap. So that, and then you put it into the concrete. The concrete dries, then you pull it out because it slides. 
you have 10 rolls of 10 pieces of saran wrap, even the first three of them got stuck to the concrete, the next seven will let it slide out. But what I'm saying is, if you have such a thing, or if you have a pipe that you used just as a, as a space holder that is made from metal, and it has, especially if it has a, a cap on the bottom for whatever reason, you just used a placeholder pipe. You took a random pipe. And you forgot, and it has and it has grooves inside. It has the threads, like I showed you. It's a keli. So now you have amshacha. You made your water kosher. When it came through there, it became a problem again. Because it's indents in the cement. No, so you have to check the cement to make sure you don't leave anything in there. I'm saying you have to make sure that from amshacha, it does not touch anything that's makabel tuma after the amshacha. It cannot touch anything that's mekabal tumah after the The amshachah should be the last place that the water touches before it lands on the mikvah. Ah? Uh, what? On top of the water tachter. Like a stream on top of the water tachter. It falls through the hole. It's a strong stream. Yeah. Now, another thing is, this is where we go if you, we follow the Rebbe's shit to the tiles, the chathila, are mekabel tuma not mekabel like So then, if you have the water that's falling on the tiles before it goes, you again have the same problem, because the water, instead of landing and becoming kosher, it lands on something which is not the kills ruins amshacha. And also, you have to check when you pour the mikveh. You have, like I explained to you, you have the metal that holds the concrete together. And sometimes, if you don't really know perfect, the cement wasn't poured perfectly, there might be metal still sticking out in certain places in the concrete on top. You might have to go and cover it afterwards. Make sure that that metal is covered. Because otherwise, the water is going to be touching the metal. Now, how does it make we become possible in Shleisha Logim? First of all, First rule is, let's insist as vav, mikveh has to have less than 40 saw. Because if it has 40 saw, and if so, we're not going to get into the raivet now, but not so, not so. What I'm saying is, shulchan aruch is, if it has more than 40 saw, it becomes possible. Second thing is, second rule of shleishalugim is, the shleishalugim have to fall into the mikveh. And get mixed into the water there. If the water did not fall into the mikveh and get mixed into the water, into the water of the mikveh there, full shleishalogim doesn't make the mikveh possible. It's less than shleishalogim. You have a keli, which has the shochanor. If you have a bottle, which is could hold more than shleishalogim, and it falls into the mikveh, but the opening of the bottle is small, that not all the water will come out, it doesn't make the mikveh possible. Because the mikveh does not have shleishalogim that fell into it. It has a bottle with shleish shalugim that's inside the mikveh. But not all the shleish shalugim of Maim Shulim fell into the mikveh. So you have this mikveh less than 40 saw and the bottle falls into it, a full bottle with water, and it's open and it falls straight down. It doesn't fall, doesn't fall uh, pouring into it. It just falls in and, all, and the water didn't come out of it. It's not a problem. According to Shulchan Aruch. What do you mean? Or people uh, No, no, I'm saying Shulchan Aruch says that. That's in Sif design. Then you have in Sif you test. You have two mikvahs. Each mikveh has less than 40 saw. And each one of them falls into it less than shleish alugim. Let's say a lug and a half falls into the mikveh on the right, and a lug and a half falls into the mikveh on the left. Each mikveh has less than 40 saw. Both mikvahs, you can't toivel in them because they have less than 40 saw. But none of them became possible. Okay? Now they both connected together. Whatever it is, the wall broke between them. Or it was a thin wall, whatever it is, they both connected together. The halacha is, the halacha is that it become, it's still kosher. Even though now when it joined together, you have a full shloshalugim of water in there. Why Shulchan Aruch says, 
None of them had the 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 the, the definition of a name of Pasul, Nikra of Shim Tzu. Yeah. In the police of an alpha test it says that in the situation that you table two kills one inside the other one. Yeah. And the outside one is the key the, the top part is very very narrow. Yeah. It's good. Right? Yeah. Why? Because where it goes in. Yeah, saying. but it's empty. We're talking about a full bottle. But it asks for one second, but it asks say water goes in even though it's very very now. The question is also if you have a full bottle, it mixes, even though that it doesn't mix. Yeah, Practic- you know, take a bo- take a bottle of colored water like the sea, the and dump it in, and you'll see it's not going to happen so fast. It's so a very, very, very long time for the water from a narrow bottle. Take a bottle of wine. Well, my question is, it's not going to go out, but it's part of it. Yeah, it's part part is not a thing. The whole yeah. psul of Shleish Lugan is the Shleish Lugan fell into a mikvah. Not Venice Arvo. Not that it's not that you have Shleish Lugan sitting in this independent container. That is touching the mikveh. No, the water is touching the mikveh. The Just the top of the water is touching the mikveh. Not all the shleish looking. Right? So Shulchan Aruch says it has no, back to what we were saying, has no shame psul on it. And therefore, if these two mikvahs, each one of them never had a shame psul, if these two mikvahs got together, they don't become puzzle. Huh? Instead of pulling the narrow bottle, yeah. that shackle doesn't work. That works like the musician was. around. Yeah, you need a shofar to 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 touch them together. But all the water doesn't get mixed in. Doesn't get mixed in. Yeah, shofar works. works. So yeah, I don't want shofar tonight. If the water did not come out of the bottle, then it does not make the mikvah possible. Even though it has a shofar. Yeah. So shofar works. We match the possible. Well, yeah. This is based on the halacha that the top water and the bottom water don't mix. Uh, don't, don't Nothing to do with top. We're not talking top and side. We're talking top and bottom. Top and bottom water don't mix because they, they mix, but much slower. That's just because yeah, whatever right. difference of nature. Yeah. Anyways, the and then the Shulchan Aruch also says if it's the other way around that you had one mikveh, which was less than forty saw, and full shleish looking fell into it, and then that mikveh split into two. Now each because whatever it was that overflowed the two places, then flowed split into two places. Then, even though each side doesn't have shleishulugin, it's still possible because that mikveh became possible by definition. There is a machlekes achreinim. What are we talking about over here when you have two mikvahs? That each one, the Shabbat says, you have two mikvahs and each one has less than forty saw and it gets a look and a half. What are we talking about? That then, that when they join together, doesn't make it possible. There are some people would say. That the only way these two mikvahs together become kosher is when they t- the two together have 40 saw of rainwater. So then we say you have 40 saw of rainwater combined, and you have a lug and a half and a lug and a half. So at the moment of combination, it became 40 saw. The same moment also became shloisha lugin. So I, the shloisha lugin, became one piece, but there's already 40 saw, so it became kosher. Came get to the other bank and uh, and the the or even if not, if you say that if you say that each one of these never had a name of puzzle, then even if you have eighteen saw in one plus a look and a half, and eighteen saw in the other one plus a look and a half, when they join together, you have thirty six make shamim, three gimel, three logim. And it still doesn't make it possible. Ketzemach Tzedek, which I think you have over there, the first Tzemach Tzedek that I put over there, and the, in, in Chidushim on the Mishnais, now there's Chidushim on the Mishnais, and it was printed originally, that's the first part of the book. Afterwards, they found new things. It's, we'll call it Chedek Beis. It's, that's a, it's a different one. It's a later page numbers. So in the Chidushim, Peter Gil Mishnah Aleph, he explains that even if after... He goes through it, explains it at length, that even after there's a chibur of, of the two mikvahs together, even if there's less than 40 saw on each one, it doesn't become possible because it never had lehoi all of shem psu, lehoi all of lehoi all of shem psu, lehoi all of shem psu, that means this, each one of them never became possible, and 
Therefore, even if they combine together, now you have 36 of rainwater and three logan. All you have to do is add another four logan of rainwater, and it's good. That's what Samach Tzedek explains. And the third rule of Shleisha Logan is a difference whether you're talking about that the whole boil is filled with Maim Shovim, and then you want to be Machshirat, or you had a mikveh which had less than 40 saw, and you and Shleisha Logan fell into it, how to be Machshirat. How do you Machshirat a mikveh which had Shleisha Logan and made it possible? So just remember the main one of the questions that are important to know over here is whether when a mikveh becomes possible, does any water that fall into it afterwards also become possible, becomes the same category or not? That's I'm not gonna get into it at this moment. Let's continue. Huh? Good water, Good water falls into a mikveh, which is possible. You have 20 saw, make shamim, then Shlesha Logan fell into it, made it possible. What's the category of the next water that falls into it? What's the category of the water that's in there now? In Seif Chaf, I'm just going to say this, Seif Chaf, you have a scenario like this. You have a boil, which is filled with Maim Shuv. It's a simple Shulchan Aruch. A boil is filled with Maim Shuvim. And you have a stream of rainwater going into it, and a stream coming out from the other side. Rainwater, not mine, because mine is metabolic culture, it's connected. Um, stream of rainwater. The halacha says, It remains possible until that time that you make a calculation that there's no, that there's nothing left of the shuvim, not nothing. There's less than shleish shulugim of shuvim left in this boil. It means the amount of water that has to flow into the boil and come out of the boil has to be enough to drain out all the water, the ma'am shuvim that's there until it's less than shleish shulugim, and the draining of this water this is what has to be done a the mathematical calculation. Right? Obviously, so, uh, yeah, obviously there's still 40 stuff in the actual part. I mean, the, the hole that was on the other side yeah. is not the 40 stuff. Yeah. So one of the ways to explain it is you're talking about now you have a, 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 I mean, it's a simple way of looking at it is you have a bird which has, let's say, 20 saw of, of Maim Shovim. Now you're going to have rainwater going into it. It's a big enough hole. So the water which came into it doesn't become possible right away. It's possible to tivel, but the water doesn't get the category of shuvim. It just you can't tivel on it. It doesn't become chatichanas in the veil, basically. But you have to have enough water which is going to flush out the bad water. Right? Another way of saying is no, even the water that goes into here and sits in the boil becomes possible, and you need much more to drain, to flush it out. Now, how do you make this cheshman? The shach sifkotun and vav, which brings the raivid, that says, two ways of making a cheshman, either mechza or mechza, or percentage-wise, and the shach is, says that we're machmer both ways. Right? How does, it, how does it, the shach says in the name of the raivid that we're going to be machmer both ways? Whether if percentage-wise is going to give us the need to flush more water, we'll follow that. If mechza or mechza will give us the need to flush more water, we'll follow that. How do you make this calculation? You have a bird which has 40 saw ma'im shovim. You have 40 lugin. 40 lugin ma'im shovim. That's it. Not a lot of ma'im shovim. 40 lugin ma'im shovim. Now, this rainwater um, uh, um, uh, stream is going to bring another 120 lugim of Maim Shuvim into there. So now you have a total of 160 lugim of Maim Shuvim inside this boy. Not Maim Shuvim, 160 lugim of Maim inside this boy. 40 original, and 120 that came from the stream. And 
80 Lugin came out through the pressure. 80 Lugin came out. So you have 120 came in, 80 came out, and you have 80 left inside. Because you have the original 40, 120 flowed in, 80 came out, you left with 80. So now, sorry, not 180, 160. 160 total. And from that, because you have 40 plus 120. So, you have, so that means inside this 160, a quarter of them are shoven. Because you had 40 Lugin shoven originally. Now you have through with the plus 120. So from the total 160, you have a quarter which is shoven. So when 80 Sa'al walk out of there, which is half of the water that came in, half of the water that's inside plus what came in, because half of 160 is 80. So how much water came out in this 80? Lefi Cheshben, you say it's a quarter. So a quarter of 80 is 20. So 20 Lugin came out. 20 Lugin of Shuvim are still inside. So if you do it, the cheshben, the percentage-wise, you're going to have to flush another until another 80 Lugin come out. And that way, the first 80 Lugin took out a quarter, which is 20 Lugin. The next 80 Lugin took out another 20 Lugin. And you got rid of all the 40. No, we say it goes, it goes, uh, flows, it clears it all out. We don't say that it stays in there uh, like that. Cheshben is all that comes out. Right, so if you do it lefi cheshbin, you're going to have to, to to flush through it two times eighty. So each one, each each time of the eighty, will take out a quarter of the water. But if you're going to do it half and half, you're going to say that it goes based on half and half. So if I flushed into there enough that eighty lugin came out, mechzel mechzel, half of that is forty. So it's all clear. Now, what happens if you have it the other way around? You have the other way around. You have a boy which has 120 logim of Maim Shuvim. And the Amma could only bring in 40 logim. So now you have a total of 160, but it's in reverse. A quarter of the total water is, make sure, is, is kosher water. And three quarters is Maim Shuvim. And somehow you got 80 Lugin out of that boy. With enough pressure, whatever it is, 80 Lugin came out. So if you're going to go to Fih Hashbin, you're much better off. Because already 60 Lugin came out. Out of 80 that came out, 60 are Maim Shuvim. Because three quarters. And if you're going to do half and half, only 40 came out. Because out of 80, only 40. So, whichever way you're going to look at it, sometimes it's going to be machmer to follow the half and half. Sometimes it's going to be machmer to follow the lofi cheshben. And the rive, it says you machmer both ways. That's how the uh, shach understands the rive. However, however, the halacha is the Rama paskins in the end of Sifchav Beis, im hoisa kola she'uva, afilu nasa nachi yotzakim ilu v'oid lo mehani, lo mechashven amayim ha'yotzin fi'erech hakshen, v'apsulim, you always do lofi cheshben, whether it's the Chumrah or the Kula, you always do according to calculation. Now, this words of the Ramah are very important because that's going to be the base for a whole different Machlech is going to get to soon. The way the Shach explains this, it seems that if this boy is filled to the top with Maim Shovim, any water, then the new water comes in and washes out the old water, or whether the boy was only half filled, and to be able to flood it, you first had to fill it up halfway and then flood it out. It still doesn't become, doesn't there's no difference, whichever way, whether the boy was totally filled to the top or not filled to the top, as long as enough rainwater came in, enough water came out, I mean, the cheshmet's fine. However, the way that Taz understands the Rambam in Sifkat Lamed Beis over there, and that's if he, he the way that Taz understands it, it seems according to the Rambam, 
you have to be mechashiv also for the water that came into the bird before it overflowed. That also you have to add it to the calculation to flood it out. So if the bird had capacity of 40 saw and only had 20 saw shuvim, so you had to add another 20 saw to reach the top to flood it. Those 20 saw also is a problem. They also have to be flooded out. There's a lot of uh, discussions in the Achroinim how to understand how does this fit with the Rambam. I'm not going to get into it now. So this is when you have... Huh? Uh, this is, I just said you have a lot of saw and the thousands of some retired. Hmm? That's you can't say that thousands of some has a bunch of Because if a bunch of come in one shot, it's retired. Huh? It falls, it falls all into it. In one shot. The whole list falls into it in one shot. So make it cush in one shot. Now, this is about a bird which had rain, which had maim shuvim inside of it. So, if Chafal of Chafbeis talks about a mikveh which had kosher water and became possible through Gimelogin. So, Sif Chafal is talking about a big mikveh, the big hole. Right now, it has in it less than 40 so. And Shloy Shalugin fell into it, so this whole thing became possible inside of it. And you have the capacity to add a full 40 so of rainwater into it. So we would think that adding 40 saw is enough to make it kosher. Comes and tells you, no. You have to flood the mikveh until it's going to come out of the mikveh the amount of water that was in this bird in the beginning. So in, if this bird had 39 saw kosher water and three lugin puzzle, you have to add enough water into there and calculate how much water comes out of it until you see the 39 lugin plus a little bit came out. And then you know you got rid of the original water that was in there. That was a problem. Tzemach Tzedek. This is the next Chidushim of Tzemach Tzedek. Uh, this is in, in the second part of Chidushim. Same, same Mishnah, Perigimah Mishnah Aleph. Asks a question. He says, if there's a mikveh which holds 40 saw, yeah? Let's say a regular hole in the ground holds 40 saw. And it has... 19 se'ah kosher. And one se'ah sho'uv falls into it. So now you have 20 se'ah. If you're going to add water into this mikveh until 20 se'ah flood out, flood out, according to cheshben, you're going to only get out half a se'ah or maybe less, depending how you make the cheshben. You might have to flood at 80 80, 80 cell of rainwater or 100, 100, 160 cell of rainwater. There's different cheshbonus over there. But the free cheshbon, you're not going to flood out this cell of make shaman, of, 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 of maim shulvin. So why is it kosher? Shulchan Aruch says the pashtus, if it became possible, you flood out what was there before and shalom Yisrael. But if you're going to use the, the logic of cheshbon, which we used for a boy that's filled with maim shulvin, how would it work in such a scenario? If you're going to only take out milui ve'oid, you're not going to so, you're not going to solve the problem. There's still for sure more than shloisha lugin maim shuvim in this mikvah. You have one saw. Saw is twenty four lugin. If I have a boy which has forty saw and holds forty saw, have nineteen saw make shamim. One saw of maim shuvim fell into it. I have twenty saw. I'm going to go now and flood the mikveh until 20 saw come out. Right? Okay. So now, how much water did I have to add into it? I have to add 41. Because I have to first put 20 to fill it up to the top. And another 21 to push out the old ones. But from that, from that amount, how much comes out from the original water? It's two, two, two to one ratio because I added 40 and I took out 20. So I added 40, I have 20, and I added 40 more. So I have 60. Right? I have 60. I Out of those 60, 20 came out. So from those 20, a third is from the show of him, from the original. I put 41. Huh? I put 41, I put, uh... 41. So for, part of it is from the original Hajman. 
but you still have some of the original se'ah in there. It's not shloish shalugan. Shloish shalugan is very little. You fought 20 se'ah, you get shloish shalugan out right away. Huh? Shach, discuss, let me see what the shach says. He doesn't discuss about if it's more than Shlai Shalogan. He doesn't discuss if it's more than Shlai Shalogan. But they don't answer, they don't explain his question. They don't answer what happens to it. They just say it's kosher. So I said from the beginning. They say it's kosher and they don't say what's going to be, what happens over here. Why does it help? It's an authentic explains. So you still have two gimel of I, uh, One half a log of Naim Shovim. You have more than gimel log. have a half a saw. And it's not, so it brings a few different ways of calculating it. You might end up having to flood a lot more than, than 80 to get a pichesh and everything out. Based on all this discussion of how, yeah. saying that the word that comes in is not quite possible. Just so you're not allowed to take on it because you still have mind food. Yeah, when you flood it, it doesn't make it possible. Yeah. So he says, it's not success. Shema Yeshlaim. He says, maybe you can answer at the end of that paragraph, the first paragraph of Peter Gimel. Since you had a bit of in the beginning, so yes, it made all the water possible, but ultimately that of Shuvin became bottle of because you have it's min uh, it's bottle of So you have uh, you have uh, nineteen versus one, it became bottle. So there, it's 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 enough of milui void in in this scenario, and therefore. You don't need Lefi Cheshben for this Se'ah which fell in of Shuvim. The only time you need Lefi Cheshben is in the Bayer which is fully Shuvim. That's the Tzemach Tzedek shit. Now the Tzemach Tzedek over here is interesting that he uses, he clearly tells you the Gimel Lugin Bevadei Lav Davka. It's clear, he says, that the Shir of Gimel Lugin is Lav Davka. That means when, the, when it says, it says that what, to make a Mikveh Kosher, that you need Milui Ve'oid, it could be more than Gimel Lugin also. If like 19 plus 1 is much more than Gimel Logan. 19 plus 1, 19 sa'a plus 1 sa'a, each sa'a is 24. So you have, uh, it's more than than than, uh, than Shlesh Logan. It's love that when Shulchan Aruch says Shlesh Logan, that you could flood it and make it kosher, it doesn't mean specifically Shlesh Logan. More. Less is never makes it possible. Yeah, you have to get rid of the extra so should to remove. So in this case, you need No, you need it until you have less than So you the point of Milui Oid means you had Milui means you had 19 so. And then Shalogan fell into it. So you take out 19 plus a little bit to make the Shlesh Logan less than Shlesh Logan. But if you have a lot more than Shlesh Logan, so you're gonna have to take out. Until you drain it, less than Shlesh Logan. Based on the question you said, it's kosher. In a situation that I, I don't have more than 80, I have exactly 60, the amount of exact. It's what? Kosher? If what? In a situation that you're saying, it's instead of asking a question, it comes out that you have. He asked it, but he answers it's not. He still followed that law, that it's, that it's, uh, that's okay. That it's okay. But you still have to add more water, he says, no? No, he said, like a Shulchan Aruch says, you have to add water. Not the Fichajman. You just have to add as much to drain out what's but there. I don't have any more. I have exactly 60. So you have to figure out how to get enough water into there. So Mishnah says you put a you put a plug in the roof, whatever it is, and you get the water. You have enough water over there. The it happens to be there's a Gulas Ilias, which I printed for you. I'm not going to go through it now. It's long, very long. He goes completely the other way. He says that the whole reason why Milui Ve'oid works. Is only in Shlesha Lugin, Metsum Tzamim, because then by flooding the mikveh, you'll get for sure the fi but you for sure get rid of the Shlesha Lugin. Not like it's a It's other cases that you won't get the Fi You won't get if it's more than Shlesha Lugin, you have to do the Fi Why does it taste like the same way even by Nakhla Sam? 
Why does Rabbi Yisrael say? He says, he explains to you why you don't need it. That's talking about Gimel Lugim. He goes through There's eight, there's ten, ten say from the Gilasilius. I printed it all for you if you want to learn it. I'm just pointing it out to you. But my we follow Tzimach Tzedek, not the Gilasilius. So Tzimach Tzedek says that we follow Meloi Void. The Shaf says the whole, the whole reason that the is like that is because, because you're, you're going to get, you're, you're going to get Lukit Hashem. That's what it seems like he's, he's saying. That you could have been, you need you need Lukit Hashem from Gimel Lugim. In where? In the Shahan Sifchav. We're talking no, about Sifchav. No. no, he's speaking about Sifchav Bey. Sifchav Bey says, because you're going to get the Ficha, because you're going to get the Ficha Eshman. So he's saying the Minah Din, the Ikhara Din, the Sagi would have been enough to do, but you still have to do. But if it's more than that, then you have to do the Ficha No, he doesn't say you have to do the Ficha more than that. He's just saying the case of Sifchav Bey. Over here, it's all a shayla of. He says in Sifchav Bey, the fear mina din would have been enough to just be a shayla fi chashmin. Yeah, and for the chumra, why did they believe? That means that the minimum you have to do is that meikar din. You have to do. You have to do a fi chashmin. You could understand the shayla. We can understand that he says that that is talking about because when you have forty saw and you have twenty thirty nine saw and shleish alugin. You don't need to float 39 and a little bit to get out. So I should look in the Fichash Benidu. Yeah, you can do even less. Lachum, Much less. In Lachum, we do more. But what if, what if the other way around, that's what I'm saying. The Tanakh Tzedek says no. And Gulasilia says eight pages, four pages. Tells you why, yes. The Fichash Benidu. You could understand it, but he's talking about only the Chum. That we're machmer, kadeh, milu, evoid. Not that you always have to do the Fichash Benidu. It doesn't tell you that if it's more than that, you have to do the uh, Fichash Benidu. But if, yeah. if milui va'oid is, is only is only is lachumra, then that means we should be when when the chesed is, is more lachumra, then we should go, we should look. Yeah, so you can understand it either way. And then in seif chav beis, which is the end of this, uh, what we're talking about today, he's talking about a mikveh which has exactly forty saw place, and you had forty saw minus three logan, and three logan came into there. And now the mikvah is totally full. You can't add another drop of water into it. So you need to have into it, you have to flood it with, with uh, you have to get enough water into it to take out all those 40 saw that are there. Um, I mean, it's just under 40 saw because you need the 39. and uh, You just have to get get that the shleisha lugin should be less than shleisha lugin. So it's right under 40 saw. And the halacha is that the water that comes in takes it out. Are you going to ask me a question? You're going to see, scientifically speaking, if you have a full thing of water, you're not going to be able to get, when you're going to pour water into it, the majority of the water that's going to come out in the beginning is going to be from the old water. And as it slows down, the percentage has changed. Or maybe Bechla is going to take out most of the water in the beginning is going to be water that could... That, uh, Depends on the pressure. You might three quarters of the water is going to be water that you just poured in. So I saw, I don't remember where I saw it. There's an explanation. He says, even though the halacha is like that, why? They went and they made a cheshven, some kind of calculation. When you start the flow in the beginning, you're going to push out more, more of the old water and less of the new water. And as it, huh? With pressure. Pull out, take out more. If it's drip, 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 it doesn't do anything. You have pressure. Pressure of 40 cell or whatever, 80 cell. And you're going to have... I mean, there's a solution that he asked in the beginning of the year. That means that if you have 40 cell in one shot, hmm. it's not an issue. To begin with, no? It has to flood it out. You still have to flood it out. So uh, he says, that basically, you took the average. And that's what, that's why the Ravid says half and half. Because the Ravid, because now you look at the Ravid, it says that when you do... Uh, that you, one of the ways of calculation is half and half, the chesh is half and half. But in the beginning, you're going to get more rain, more I'm sure of amount. In the end, you're going to get less I'm sure of amount. So you go in the middle, you say half and half, and, and that's it. So that's, but ultimately, the, the, the water is going to push it out, even though it doesn't make sense. Because as more water comes in, there's less of the original water that's going to come out. Still, no, the Allah is we're making over here that you just need milu oid, the oid in this scenario, right? That's how Allah is paskin. However, like I said, the Gulas Ilias will say, now, if you have a mikveh 
which is, which is, which has mayim shovim in it. And the best way would be to totally drain it. Ah, you have a shach which says that it's not like that. And there's a minig from the, he brings from the aguda about pumping it out. The poil, the shach himself asks on it. In the shach, I think. Nine. Huh? Nine. Nine towards the end over there. He brings an aguda. And uh, but the poil we do we do drain out. If we have a problem, it's much better to drain it out and get all the bad water out and then dry it properly than to than to uh, start flooding it because well, you, if you're gonna flood it and today's McFoy's which are much bigger, you start getting into a shaila whether you have to flood until it reaches to the top. How much of it you have to flood? Does the new water that came in became possible or not? So it's better to just drain it, dry it out, and start from fresh. Now, it's a practical thing. How do you do this? So you're going to drain out a mikveh with a pump. Now, you don't have, just remember, you don't put a drainage hole on the bottom bite of the mikveh or anywhere in the mikveh on the bottom because then all the water is going to be zeichel and it's being held by a pipe. And could be it's mekabal tumah. So the schila is being maimed al devon mekabal tumah, which we're going to get to in a different oh. year. But schila maimed, maimed in some of the mekabal tumah. So there's no, when we build mikvahs today, we don't make a drainage system out of the mikvah. What you do is on the bottom of the bottom boil, you sometimes could make a little indentation on the floor where you, you stick a pump from outside, will go, all the water will first drain out, whatever is left will fall into this little hole, and then you'll drain it from there, and then you dry it. You pat it dry with towels, or whatever else you have to dry, whichever way you have to dry it, and then you take and you put a heater into it. You wait for it, it's going to take time, it's going to drip out, you don't put tiles in the Bertachten. You don't put tiles in the Bertachten anyways. You don't need to. Nobody's looking over there. Tiles are for looks. You don't have to do a... You don't have to put tiles in... What? I said you smear waterproofing before. On the concrete. You smear waterproof and then you test it. Huh? Concrete itself will absorb water. No, said concrete will absorb water for a long time, and then ultimately it will stop absorbing water, and it's not going to leak out anymore, probably, depending how the concrete is made. But we anyways do waterproofing. You smear waterproof on it, and it's waterproof. So you dry the whole mikveh. Once you get all the water out and you pass towels on it, then you put a heater, like the regular space heaters that blows hot air. You put that into the bertachten, until the walls are what we call bone dry. As you look at it, and there's absolutely no moisture on the walls. That's how you dry, practically, that's how you dry a bite. means first you dry it well, after you get rid of all the water, you put the, you put the, the space heater into there, and that blows, is going to blow those, those heaters that you plug in and it blows hot air, and that's going to totally dry it. Then you inspect it, then you can start filling it up again. If you have even any problem of water coming in, you have to make sure before the rainwater floods in that it's going to be completely dry so you don't have any shyness of gimel logan. Like I said before, when it comes to Amshach, you also want to make sure there's no mekabel, there's no, this doesn't go on anything mekabel tumo after Amshach because then you completely messed up the whole idea of the Amshach. You have to make another Amshach after. Now, the next year is going to be at some point next week. We're going to, I'm probably going to do practical. There's one more, there's going to be one more practical, but before that, I'm, I'm going to try to do Shinui Mare with, uh, with wine and maybe get into the snow and ice. So we don't hold on that.